Game number 16. Moving right along still. Harder and harder competition. The last guy almost flagged me. Okay. Alakine. New book. And we're going to go with the special sauce. Here, D6, G6, and if C4, we've transposed into four pawns attack, and if C3, it's a very passive version of the four pawns. Don't mind getting the extra tempo there. And then you're supposed to play for C5 in these positions favorably. Can I get away with that? I'm going to try. And I'm getting wicked play otherwise, so this is gonna this is gonna work out. He DC'd just when it was starting to get get interesting. Um, Twenty seconds, nineteen. Come back, come back. He's from Mexico. Oh, he's back. All right, there we go. And bishops are looking good, man. Let's line you up. Let's do it. Make our bishop great. Go to c4 with the knight. Kill b2. Swap gears. Don't hang e7. I was, I was trying for everything there, but that, that was just clearly a blunder. B3 is looking pretty good. I'm going to go E6, rook FC8, bishop F8. And he dropped the game. That sucks because it's starting starting to get interesting. Now <clears throat> you have to be careful because like you can't play d5 all the time in, in these trick lines. But once we got here, like you just have to understand that you have to get counterplay in the center. So this knight a6 c5 move is, is very typical. It's what we recommended pretty universally in the text. And then you got the in-between move and screws up the pawns and here like queen c8 is definitely something better than that probably just going for it honestly um knight c4 queen takes a6 rook takes b2 it's a double pawn anyway and then e6 get your queen over to the king side with the rook on b2 and try to mate the guy so that was definitely uh the way to go but we got our first uh, first Alakine in there. 